Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Channel. Today, I'll be presenting the case of a 44-year-old male who presented to our ER with complaints of acute vision loss of bilateral eyes following in intake of the industrial spirit. Yeah. Patient had presented after six days of intake of the spirit. So, on 10-second assessment, patient was conscious, oriented, and obeying commands. An airway was patent. There was no secretions, no gurgling or pulling of saliva. On breathing, air entry was bilaterally equal. Patient had a respiratory rate of 16 breaths per minute with a saturation of 98% at room air. On circulation, patient had a BP of 140 bar 80 mm Hg with a pulse rate of 72 per minute. All peripheral pulses were present. On disability, GCS was E4, V5, M6. On exposure, patient was febrile and GRBS was 110 mg per deciliter. At this time, we had taken adjuncts to the primary survey. Uh, we had taken the VBG of the patient and in VBG, pH was 7.4 with a PCO2 of 41, bicarbonate was 28 and lactate was 2.5. Hmm. Anion gap was normal, it was 8.3. We had also taken an ECG in this patient since the patient gave an history of intake of the spirit. So, uh, and the ECG came to be with normal sinus rhythm. There was no STT changes or QTC prolongation. Coming to the sec sample history, a uh, 44-year-old male with no known comorbidities who was apparently normal till 7 days ago gives a history of conception of industrial spirit for a get-together after which he developed blurring of vision the next day. So, he was evaluated and at, at an outside hospital on the second day after the ingestion and uh, during the evaluation, he was his VBG was found to be showing pH of what 7. What is the importance of time delay in this patient? Usually in uh, toxic alcohol intake, if the presentation is immediate, then uh, the changes can be re reversible. Oh. So, as uh, we can provide with the antidote to the patient hmm. and then the toxic metabolites can be washed out. Formation washed of out. the toxic metabolites can so be prevented. will not happen. The hmm. formation will not happen. So, the adverse effects will not happen. happen. That's why the immediate treatment is more important than delayed treatment. Okay. Delayed treatment means already that toxic material has formed that has produced damage. So, it will become irreversible. Uh, so, on his presentation to the outside hospital, VBG was showing severe metabolic acidosis. The pH was 7.18 with a bicarbonate of 2 and PCO2 of 18. His RFTs and LFTs were normal. Okay. So, uh, with the provisional diagnosis of methanol toxicity, uh, they had uh, done uh, two sessions of hemodialysis. And on the uh, initially, it was blurring of vision. Uh, by third day and fourth day, he had developed complete loss of vision of bilateral eyes. So, they had also started the patient on um, methyl prednisolone 1 gram for 4 days and following there was no improvement of vision and hence the patient came to our hospital. So, on uh, initial uh, uh, history taking we got we came to a provisional diagnosis of methanol toxicity okay. because he had developed uh, um, severe metabolic acidosis also with a bilateral loss of vision. Okay. Uh, so, we uh, on general examination, patient was conscious, uh, oriented, there was no pallor, icterus, cyanosis, clubbing or lipidopathy. Uh, other systems were within the normal limits. We had done an ophthalmic evaluation. In the ophthalmic evaluation, there was no perception to light and uh, we had also given an ophthal consult and in that uh, anterior segment examination, cornea was clear pupils were having only sluggish reaction to the light. What is the size of people in alcoholism? Acute alcohol intake, methanol poisoning, ethanol poisoning. Midriasis, uh, it will be dilated. dilated. Okay. Uh, so, in anterior segment examination, cornea was clear, pupils were having sluggish reaction to the light, lens was clear in both eyes. We had also done a dilated fundus examination, which showed mild disc pallor with macula and periphery normal in both eyes. Okay. Uh, so, coming to the uh, management of this patient, uh, we had initially, uh, we had a provisional… So what are the clinical findings of uh, toxic alcohol ingestion? 
Uh, what are the clinical findings of alcohol intoxication? Uh, it, uh, usually, the clinical manifestation will be the depending on the amount of alcohol intake. Okay. Uh, so, if it is between 0.03 to 0.03 to 0.012, then the patient will be having uh, self confidence, uh, less anxiety. Self confidence, every everyone will have <laughs> increased self increased more more abnormal self self confidence. Uh, then patient will be having less anxiety, impaired judgment, and short. attention okay so uh, then if the concentration is more uh, to 0.09 to 0.25 then uh, it can evoke sedation in the patient lack of comprehension can be there delayed motor reaction blurring of vision imbalance etc can be there okay. if it is between 0.25 to 0.4 then the patient can have amnesia in and out consciousness uh, staggering gait vomiting it can also cause bradycardia okay. and in the e- severe amounts like 0.35 to 0.8 then patient can go to comatose lack of pupillary response can be there can cause respiratory depression and severe bradycardia okay it will be the manifestation okay. uh in then if we take the blood levels of the alcohol more than 100 it can evoke ataxia in the patient more than 200 it can cause uh, sedation in the patient more than 400 respiratory depression what is the abg abnormality seen in alcohols normal alcohol usually it can metabolic acidosis, metabolic acidosis. acidosis. then uh, methanol ethan- ethylene glycol all yeah. it will show met- metabolic same, acidosis same uh, same type of uh, features are seen in all types then how do you differentiate these three things is it possible to differentiate between uh, so normal alcohol intoxication methanol and ethanol osmolarity gap osmolar gap. gap how do you calculate osmolar gap uh, uh, with the serum osmolarity minus the calculated osmolarity hmm. and calculated osmolarity is by 2 sodium plus glucose by 18 plus 1 by 2.8 and if uh, in case of ethanol intake plus ethanol by 4.6 okay you have to get an ethanol level level by then if you calculate with ethanol you can you can know that whether there is another sub hmm. substance which produces Plus. toxicity because most of the time what happens is uh, people di- adulterate alcohol normal alcohol with ethanol methanol okay mm. that's why if you are suspecting uh, methanol poisoning if there is a level of ethanol whether you can get it or not from lab then you can calculate the mm. whether it is due to methanol or not osmolar gap means what is osmolar gap it is the uh, uh, Be- between the serum osmolarity and the calculated, calculated osmolarity oh, okay okay so uh, in this patient we had what is high anion gap metabolic acidosis high anion gap metabolic is it high anion gap or a normal anion high usually it will be high anion all gap met- all alcohols are high anion gap metabolic acidosis osmolar gap is uh, calculated afterwards mm. okay so in this patient we had not sent the serum osmolarity because okay. already 6 so days was over, over. Okay. and patient was dialyzed from outside okay. so we had not sent Uh, so initially, so uh, in a acute condition, how do you manage this case? Mm-hmm. This is this patient is coming after six days, so we have nothing more to offer to the patient. But in acute condition, how do you manage methanol poisoning? Initially, if the patient's presentation is within one hour, so after six days to treat alcohol poisoning, mm-hmm. patient will have alcohol induced problems. Then the toxic materials of that alcohol. that is formic acid or uh, oxalic acid that problem also has to be treated so how do you treat first of all alcoholic intoxication if the presentation is wait, within one hour might be we can give her gastric lavage for the patient okay. activated charcoal. charcoal doesn't have a role because right. alcohol gets absorbed very fast okay. and the peak concentration will be within one hour okay. so activated charcoal doesn't have a role not be useful okay uh then um if the patient is uh, de- uh like antidotes uh, thiamine can be given for the patient thiamine is for what uh patient may develop uh, a vernix vernix encephalopathy okay. so to in order to prevent that thiamine infu- uh, injections can be given for the patient uh, usually we give uh, 200 mg tid we can be given vernix encephalopathy what is the dose 500 mg so it is very high mm-hmm. 500 mg tid in prevention you give 100 to 200 mg iv as an infusion then follow that you can give tid okay. then uh, uh, then uh, to prevent the toxic metabolite formation we can give also give folinic acid luco or agitation how do you manage mm-hmm. they will be agitated Ag- uh, anxiolytics can be given for mm-hmm. the patient okay haloperidol uh, haloperidol okay. can be given for the patient okay. uh-huh. then toxic metabolites can be treated with 
to if the toxic metabolite is being produced then uh, we have the anti dots like fomipizol uh, mm. in fomipizol is if it is available and if the patient is affordable then we can go for fomipizol okay. usually given in 50 uh, mg uh, per kg initial dose will be given and then uh, 10 mg per kg can be given in bd doses okay. for 2 days okay. uh, if it is not available then we can go for uh, alcohol itself it can be given iv or oral okay. iv preparations are very difficult to get so if the iv is available then we give 10 mg per kg okay. over 30 minutes in d5 water and then uh, following we give 2 mg per kg per hour oral uh, orally usually we give 50 percentage of alcohol 50 percent hmm. which alcohol is available in 50 percent beer contains how much percentage 45 percent what what 15 15 beer beer you don't take beer that's a problem <laughs> beer contains 7 percent other alcohols 20 to 30 percent so 50 percent alcohol it is very difficult to get in our country it may be there some brands may be there i don't know But normally what what is available is uh, up to 30 percent it is available in some brands so we can try that if it is not there we have to prepare in our pharmacology department okay but in acute condition all these things are very difficult so try to get whatever is available in the market and give to the patient okay usually that we give in the dose of 2 mg per kg loading dose can be given for the patient and then 0.2 to 0.3 mg per kg can be given every fourth hour sixth hourly okay uh these are the main antidotes you used for the patient then like uh, we can also give time into the patient in order to, uh, if it is an ethylene glycol poisoning in order to prevent the formation of the toxic metabolite then What we can give the action of folinic acid is it useful uh yes because uh, when we take methanol you first uh, alcohol dehydrogenates act on the methanol and then uh, uh, it converts it gets into aldehyde then aldehyde dehydrogenates act and then forms formic acid mm. this formic acid gets converted into carbon dioxide and water so okay. for the formic acid to gets converted uh, we use uh, uh, so folinic acid faster, faster. we are giving folinic acid folic acid can we give folic acid uh usually we prefer activated uh, okay. folinic acid metabolically active Activate. form is preferred over the uh, normal folic, folic acid. acid so we give leucovorin hmm. usually given 1 mg per kg leucovorin dose is max available as um, folinic acid no no available as what strength in our pharmacy this 25 mg is available Okay. Usually, it is given one milligram per kg, maximum up to fifty milligrams per. Okay. Where else it is given. useful? Folic acid. Methotrexate poisoning. Last time, last mm-hmm. week we had a patient methotrexate toxicity. toxicity. Okay. Uh, then folic acid can be given if in case of ethylene glycol poisoning, then we can also give uh, thymine and pyridoxine for the patient okay. because there uh, fast met, uh, this will be happening with the help of pyridoxine and okay. thymine. Uh, then even with these things if the patient is not improving patient is going to severe metabolic acidosis then we can prefer uh, hemodialysis for the patient okay. okay so if you can initiate hemodialysis first phase itself that may be helpful to save the uh, eye eyesight okay but here the patient has uh, got, like got treatment after uh, 20, 24 hours 24 or 36 hours that's why he lost his vision mm-hmm. okay what else we can try what are, about other treatment uh, can be uh, tried then we can have also erythropoietin injections are also been uh, usually given for the patient okay. because it is a neuro regenerative okay. uh, so usually 20000 units iv is given uh, for the patient od for 3 days so in this patient we had initiated with erythropoietin since already hemodialyzed from outside we had started on erythropoietin for 3 days we can also give uh, pulse steroid therapy for the patient in order for is there any use of pulse steroid therapy in this patient is it really indicated or just uh, it just helps in uh, subsiding the inflammation okay normally it is not, the mechanism is not uh, uh, in, no, not an inflammation it's a toxic mediated uh, visual loss so pulse uh, steroid may not be helpful at all okay mm-hmm. only thing in acute phase he has uh, lost his vision if at all there is a inflammation that can come down that's all uh, so we had given erythropoietin and then pulse steroid therapy al- already was initiated from outside mm-hmm. for 4 days so we had continued on oral 
drug tapered to the oral dosage of 75 milligrams and given to the patient. Uh, after getting an ophthal consult, we had also given intravitreal erythropoietin. Okay. 4000 units was given in bilateral eyes. Uh, daily ophthalmological evaluation of the vision was done, uh, but the patient uh, couldn't improve the Okay. Vision. Is there a chance of improvement in this patient? Usually, once it is completely developed, it is irreversible. So, initially, before the formation of formic acid, mm. then if you can treat, uh, the vision can be, the visual loss can be reversible, uh, partially reversible. But in, in this case, it is completely lost and time, uh, the time gap is so much like uh, four or five days over. Now, it is very difficult to uh, regain the vision and he is not having light perception also. Okay, So, it is highly difficult to get back the vision. So, in this patient, uh, we had given all these things. In spite of this patient's vision didn't improve. So, uh, we had we were planning for a PMR consult so that the patient can develop. What they will try? Uh, like uh, other uh, life adjusting skills will be taught to them. Okay. So, okay. so this patient was discharged. What else you want to tell about uh, toxic alcohol injection? Anything else we left? No. Anything else you want to add? Nothing. Uh, okay. In ethylene glycol, mostly toxicity will be affecting the renal tubular, renal tubules. So oxalic there, acid. oxalic acid will be formed, and it happens in the proximal renal tubules. Okay. So there will be a new presentation will be oliguria or anuria. Ethylene glycol is used in uh, which all industries? Uh, it uh, mainly antifreeze it will okay. be there uh, then uh, windshield washers it can okay, be there it is used. Uh, so there it is reversible usually okay. it is reversible and then they present with kidney failure kidney failure they, then there there also acidosis will be there acidosis will be there high anion gap acidosis osmolal gap will be there same problem can occur there also their patient will be having hypocalcemia also because oxalates combines with calcium and get calcium oxalates. Okay. So, there in the ECG we can see QTC prolongation also. Okay. But in case of methanol toxicity, it is almost irreversible damage happens to the patient. It affects the pigmented retinal cells and okay. also it can affect the basal ganglia and the, uh, there also it can cause hemorrhagic necrosis. Okay. Anything else? Nothing. Okay.